Swords are overrated, and sometimes too sharp, so why not use a shovel as a blade? That was the big revelation that hit the creators of Shovel Knight, one of the best and most rewarding retro indie games of our generation. Hi, I'm Brendan with the leaderboard, and it's time to roll up our sleeves and dig through the lore of the valley and its tower of fate, because we have 107 facts about Shovel Knight. So grab your shovel and let's get started. Shovel Knight is an 8-bit 2D platformer that was initially released for Windows, Nintendo 3DS, and Wii U in June 2014. But since then, it's been ported to many other platforms. Mac was added that same September, while the Linux version came out in October. Then the PS3, PS4, PS Vita, and Xbox One version came out in April 2015. And since last March, we can even play it on the Nintendo Switch. Shovel Knight was developed by Yacht Club Games, an indie game studio and occasional publisher established in Valencia, California, in 2011. And guess what? Shovel Knight is their only game as developers. Its founder is Sean Velasco, who came from the emblematic indie game studio Way Forward Technologies. You probably remember them from the Shantae franchise. Developer Ian Flood revealed that one of the biggest reasons they used a retro style was for the sake of their rapid prototyping process. He said, quote, Since we didn't have a fleet of artists, maybe we should focus on the art down to something we could definitely edit on the fly and make changes and be happy with. They started to think about the game mechanics of their favorite NES games, like Zelda and its innovative combat, specifically Link's down thrust move. You probably remember it from Super Smash Bros. Wozniak said that that sparked the thought of, if you're hitting guys from above, then you're also digging through blocks, and you're maybe flipping guys over to hit their underbellies. But that sword fighting maneuver didn't fit the theme of, well, a sword. So they thought, what about a shovel? It could become a dope weapon and do all sorts of things. And thus, the world and lore of Shovel Knight came to life. Does everybody have a shovel in the game? Nope. There are a lot of knights and warriors, and they can choose any weapon, and the Shovel Knight is a master of chivalry. Other games that strongly influenced Shovel Knight were Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse, the Mega Man franchise, and just a pinch of DuckTales and Dark Souls. It all started as, you guessed it, a successful Kickstarter campaign. Its creators asked for $75,000, and they managed to get more than $300,000 in just 30 days, reaching every single one of their stretch goals. During the final stretch of the campaign, a pre-release version of Shovel Knight was sent to different prominent YouTubers like Two Best Friends Play, and Game Grumps. But that big budget wasn't enough. With a team of only six members, they had to cut costs everywhere. As the release date was approaching, they ran out of money and worked free for five months. Making indie games can be a big sacrifice. As a result, Shovel Knight suffered several delays. It was originally planned for September 2013 release, but was delayed into early 2014. The game was finally released on June 26, 2014. Since all the stretch goals were quite ambitious, the team decided to work on them after the release date and just progressively add them to the main game as free updates. And they're pretty cool! A gender swap mode, three new campaigns starred by its coolest villains, and a four-player battle mode, which is still in development. So wait, should we consider Shovel Knight just one game? Well, yes and no. Beyond the first main campaign, now retitled Shovel Knight Shovel of Hope, we can also play two different campaigns starring some of the evil knights of the Order of No Quarter. There's also an upcoming King Knight campaign, making three DLC and four campaigns total. The first campaign, Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows, was released in September 2015 and starred the infamous but kind of charming villain Plague Knight. Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment was released in March of 2017 for the Nintendo Switch and later on other platforms. It starred the creepy villain Spectre Knight as he recruits the Order of No Quarter. And King Knight will have his own campaign later in 2017, which will be released as a free update. Of all the knights in the Order of No Quarter, why were these three chosen? Well, it was decided by fans on the Dig the Vote page of the Shovel Knight campaign, so you can thank the backers. With so much content, the compilation of all campaigns was retitled Shovel Knight Treasure Trove earlier in 2017. The most recent update is the previously mentioned body swap mode. It allows the player to switch the gender of all main characters in the original game, including the villains. And you can customize it however you'd like, character by character. Concept designs exist for the body swap versions of some NPCs and other secondary characters, but they were not implemented in the main mode. Four-player battle mode is scheduled to release in late 2017 as part of both the Treasure Trove package and also for standalone purchase, like the four character campaigns. The game includes all the main characters and villains duking it out, and according to the Shovel Knight Kickstarter page, we'll have at least three different modes. Cash collecting, where you fight for treasure that appears in the level, racing, where you make your way to reach the end of each stage, and last man standing, where you just slash each other. This game will be available on all platforms except 3DS and Vita. As mentioned before, Shovel Knight embraces the look and feel of the NES, but without its technical limitations. For instance, they got rid of sprites
sprite flickering, which occurred when the NES tried to display more than eight sprites per horizontal line. They also added features like widescreen, bigger sprites, an expanded color palette, camera shakes, and lots of background parallax animations. Shovel Knight's chiptune soundtrack was composed by Jake Kaufman, who has a long history with chiptune soundtracks since the days of the Game Boy Color. Check out his Bandcamp to see his most recent releases. All the game's music and sound effects were entirely made with the Famitracker, a free software to craft 100% authentic NES music. You can even export your creations with a .NSF file, which can be played on a real NES using a flash cartridge. Mega Man's original composer, Minami Matsumai, contributed to Shovel Knight with the Explodatorium and the Iron Whale themes. Shovel Knight was once part of a legendary fighting duo with his partner and love interest, Shield Knight. In one of their adventures, they found themselves at the Tower of Fate, convenient, right? Where Shield Knight disappeared due to a cursed amulet. Deeply soul-broken by the loss, Shovel Knight retired from adventuring, but this allowed the Order of No Quarter to rule the valley under command of the evil Enchantress. As you play the game, you'll see Shovel Knight dream of saving Shield Knight in a series of playable nightmare levels, where you fight imaginary enemies while attempting to catch her. So sad. Before these dream sequences, you fall asleep by a relaxing bonfire in the wood. After the sequences, you wake up next to the bonfire's smoldering remains. These bonfire scenes are some of the most iconic moments of the game, and they were conceptualized before any of the gameplay of Shovel Knight existed. Those dreams were inspired by Nintendo's Mother 3, which managed to emotionally connect with its players. Like that one sunflower field scene? I'm not crying, there's something in my eye! Velasco and Wozniak admit that when they started to develop the game, Shield Knight wasn't much of a character. She was a MacGuffin, an empty goal for players to go after. She was even referred to as Princess MacGuffin for a while, but then they decided to develop the character further, which you will see if you complete the game. In your journey through the valley up to the Tower of Fate, you face the Order of No Quarter, who divided the valley into four quadrants enclosed by four gates. The Order has eight members, and the first one is... King Knight, Lord of the Gold-Colored Castle, Pride More Keep. He's not actually a king, but a king-themed knight. And his crown isn't even made of gold, he just enjoys fancy clothing and other luxury props. Next member is Spectre Knight, who's able to command the dead in the Lich Yard, a dark, lifeless village full of skeletons, aka bone clangs. As an undead immortal knight himself, he uses a deadly scythe as a weapon, like the Grim Reaper. If you play Spectre of Torment, you can learn much more about the life and past of Spectre Knight, such as what his true name is, but we're not gonna spoil that here. He also comes with his own set of slashing moves, wall climbing skills, and dark magic items called curios. The third member is Plague Knight, an alchemist who loves to devise deadly potions and explosives in the Explodatorium. Plague Knight's mask seems to be based on the head of a bird-like mask that plague doctors used to wear in medieval Europe to treat their patients. Historically, the beak was filled with perfumes and herbs to avoid contamination. While playing Plague of Shadows, you're able to build your own magical bombs and then use them in battle to jump, float, and attack. It's quite a different experience considering the classic abilities of Shovel Knight and his shovel. The fourth member is Treasure Knight, a loner who rules the oceans and hoards treasures in his submarine, the Iron Whale, which is filled with traps and enemies. He's technically the financial manager of the Order and all its minions. Some fans argue that Treasure Knight's design could be an homage to Bioshock's Big Daddy. What do you think? The Order's fifth member is Mole Knight, an excavator from the subterranean Lost City. It's an ancient abandoned metropolis with lava and fire everywhere. You can basically play The Floor is Lava once you reach his level. Brace yourself, steampunk fans, because the sixth member of the Order is Tinker Knight, a masked engineer who labors on diabolical devices in the Clockwork Tower. Tinker Knight is one of the two bosses to have two phases, and you can easily win the first one with just a single hit if you have the Mobile Gear Relic with you. The other multi-phase boss is the Enchantress. The next member is Polar Knight, a silent Viking-like giant who guards the stranded ship and who wields a two-handed snow shovel. Another shovel wielder? Yes, Polar Knight and Shovel Knight were once friends, and they even shared an oath. Maybe that's why he's the only other knight besides Shield Knight whose face we can see a part of, which humanizes him. He respects Shovel Knight's strength, despises Plague Knight's use of chemistry tricks, and it is implied that Polar Knight also has shared a relationship with the mysterious Black Knight, since they've been seen hanging out near a campfire later in the game. Last but not least, the eighth member of the Order is Propeller Knight. He's the commander of the Flying Machine, one of the most difficult levels of the game. Armed with a rapier sword, he's a talented aerodynamic fencer thanks to his weird heli helmet? Yeah, yeah, let's go with that. What about the Black Knight? He's the first boss you encounter in the tutorial stage, and he's almost a mirror version of yourself, Shovel included. Is he your evil doppelganger? What's his deal? Well, we can only say that, like the Black Knights from Arthurian legend, he serves no lord. Some fans argue that the first encounter with the Black Knight contains dialogue references to Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Shovel Knight says, I've got no quarrel with you. I must get to the Tower of Fate, which is similar to King Arthur's line at the bridge scene. I have no quarrel with you, good Sir Knight. 
but I must cross this bridge. Then you shall die. The final boss of the main campaign and the leader of the Order of No Quarter is the Enchantress, and her lair is the ominous Tower of Fate. Her origins are unknown, but seemingly tied to the magical powers of the tower. The developers wanted the Enchantress to quote, stand tall as a badass, instead of conforming to the sexy witch trope. Good on them. Relics are vital to Master Shovel Knight's platforming challenges. There are alternate weapons you find in blue chests, and they require magic power to use them. There are a total of eight relics in the main campaign, while Plague Knight and Spectre Knight use their own kind of relics. Beyond all the platforming and the shoveling, one of the most charming parts of the game is exploring the village and its wacky NPC inhabitants. It's immediately accessible after completing the first stage, and it works as a hub location, where you can spend your sweet money on upgrades or complete side quests. For instance, you can help the bard retrieve his lost 46 musical scores that are spread all around the game, and it's really hard. He rewards you with gold, shares a memory of how he came up with them, and then you can listen to the collected songs up until you leave the village. And if you miss any of the treasure relics in your playthrough, you can purchase them via Chester, the relic salesman. But you will pay double the price, so you better have some spare gems in your wallet. Inside the tavern, there's a secret room where you'll meet Mona, a melancholic girl who offers to play a potion throwing minigame for rewards. She might seem like a minor character, but she plays a bigger role in Plague of Shadows. Many anthropomorphic animal characters inhabit the village, like Croaker the Frog Dude. If you listen to all of his bad puns, you will unlock a feat for your infinite patience. What's a feat? It's just Shovel Knight's equivalent to a trophy or an achievement. There are 45 of them in Shovel of Hope, while Plague of Shadows and Spectre of Torment have 20 more feats, respectively. One of our favorite side characters is the Truple King, the dignified, irritable monarch of the Truples, who's half fish, half apple. He can replenish your chalice with one of his three ecors, which are magical substances that you can drink to boost your stats. The Truple King's dance was inspired by the mambo dancing fish from Link's Awakening. Such a groovy tune. An underrated item of the game is the fishing rod. Yeah, it's for fishing, but you can fish money back after dying in a bottomless pit, or you can use it as a weapon in your boss battles. And if there's sparkles in a pit, that means there's a succulent reward. If you try and fish in the Triple King's pond, he'll get reasonably mad at you. If you want to upgrade your previous shovel, you can do it in the Armor Outpost. It's located in the second lively town in the second quarter of the valley. The main hub world is consciously reminiscent of the menu in Super Mario Bros. 3. Do you see it? Checkpoints are one of the most unique and smart features of Shovel Knight. They're part of the game design, but entirely optional. You can choose to use them, or you can break them and get even more loot. It's your call. Originally, the developers wanted the checkpoints to only work if the player had a certain amount of gold, but it was discarded since it wouldn't be fair for less skilled players. Hey, did you find the Hall of Champions? It's an optional stage that you can only reach if you defeat Plague Knight and pay a one-time fee of 5,000 gold. Haunted by ghosts, you need to use light orbs to defeat its final ghostly boss. Once you complete the game, you can unlock a new game plus, where you keep all your feats, upgrades, and collectibles, but the enemies hit twice as hard. You'll find more bombs than usual, and there will be less checkpoints per stage. One of our favorite ways to play Shovel Knight is using its full local co-op mode. That means you can complete the main campaign with your buddy. It's available for PC and all console versions, except the handheld ones. The developers considered making Shield Knight a playable character in this co-op mode, but that wouldn't work with Shovel Knight's story, and they didn't decide on her final design until halfway through development. You can use over 300 cheat codes in Shovel Knight, at your own discretion. Some of them affect factors like speed, difficulty, or the nature of your relics. Our favorite one might possibly be butt mode, where all instances of knight, shovel, health, and mana have been replaced with the word butt. So shovel knight would literally be called butt butt. <laughs> It's classic. Other cheats, though, turn Shovel Knight into the perfect incarnation of OP. You can boost all his stats, make him completely invincible, even to spikes in bottomless pits, and get him all relics with infinite ammo. You can fight Shovel Knight as a boss when you play as Plague Knight in Plague of Shadows. He uses all of his signature shovel tactics, plus many of the items you collect during the main game. Similarly, you can fight against Shield Knight in a flashback in Spectre of Torment. Wish my flashbacks did that. Many fans have discussed how Plague Knight's story in Plague of Shadows fits the main story of Shovel of Hope, since they happen simultaneously, though there are many inconsistencies. Some fans argue that Plague Knight's point of view of the story is distorted, while others think that if you pay attention, it all makes sense. What do you think? Let us know in the comments! Spectre of Torment, meanwhile, was set as a prequel to Shovel Knight. Fans have praised its story as the richest and most exciting of the whole bundle. It's unclear, though, how this campaign and the upcoming King Knight's campaign will connect. Shovel Knight is the first indie game character to have his own amiibo. Nice! You can use it to unlock challenge stages and customizable knights in the Wii U and 
and 3DS versions. In March 2017, the developers used these new amiibo functionalities to put a brand new character within the game. She's the conjurer Madam Mieber, and can be found in different locations of the game. If you scan your amiibo, Madam Mieber will summon a flying friend for you, the Fairy of Shovelry, a little weird fairy version of Shovel Knight. When bringing Shovel Knight to Japan, the developers did a reverse localization, with many graphic changes like the logo, alternate easternized design for items, and more anime-esque enemies. Sadly, there's no butt cheat code. After any of the bonfire dream sequences, if you move the control pad around, Shovel Knight will shake a little bit in his sleep. He'll only wake up when you jump. Oh, and don't forget to dig the bonfire. Not only will you extinguish the fire, as we should all do in the wilderness, duh, but you'll get some sweet money. Shovel Knight's alignment is, according to developer Alec Faulkner, chaotic good. Shovel Knight makes a cameo in other indie games, like the recent Ukulele game, and even in the animated web series like the Danish cult hit Tales of Elethrion. Shovel Knight also appears as a secret boss in Azure Striker Gun Vault 2 for the 3DS, but only by using the Shovel Knight amiibo. The PS4 and Xbox One versions of Shovel Knight feature exclusive boss battles, with Kratos from God of War in the former and the Battletoad Zitz, Pimple, and Rash in the latter. Yacht Club Games first considered asking to include Sir Daniel Fortesque from Medieval as a guest boss, which would have been a really nice throwback. Some enemies were created by backers who invested $1,000 or more into the Kickstarter campaign. These backers had the chance to become directors for a day and work at Yacht Club Games to design their guest character. Four of these characters became the Wandering Travelers, optional bosses that you can face in Shovel Knight. They're Ryza, Mr. Hat, Boz, and Phantom Striker. There's a fifth one called the Liquid Samurai, who is a minor enemy from the Tower of Fate. All Kickstarter backers who pledged $200 or more had their portraits included in the level Hall of Champions. This is a reference to its description as a monument to those who founded this great land. You can see the Yacht Club Games logo hidden in a secret area of Pride More Keep. And of course, you can also destroy that logo to earn some gems. Once you defeat all the knights from the Order of No Quarter in the final boss rush, you'll see them all dangling from the tower. Will you choose to help them? It's up to you. Of all the fan renditions of Shovel Knight, one of our favorites is the anime opening that animators Chani and Kimberly did for the third year anniversary in June 2017. Although we also loved Shovel Knight's appearance in the episode of the Screw Attack web series Death Battle, where he lost to DuckTales' Scrooge McDuck. One of the most awaited Kickstarter rewards is Shovel Knight's official art book, to be released in August of 2017. It includes all kinds of concept art, developer commentary, comprehensive sprite sheets, full-page promotional illustrations, and more. Meanwhile, Penguin Books has released four Shovel Knight books, a handbook, a full guidebook, a digger's diary, and a Mad Libs compilation of 21 short stories. It's unclear if Yacht Club Games will develop a new game property after Shovel Knight, or if they're gonna end up working on a sequel, or both. Even its developers argued about it in a recent Reddit AMA. In fact, some developers would love to try different art styles and even jump to 3D platforming. They revere Super Mario 64 as the pinnacle of 3D platforming and defend it as an amazing feat, considering it was Nintendo's first attempt in the genre. But there's one big universal want from Shovel Knight fans. It's to include him as a fighter in Super Smash Brothers. Many rumors and articles keep surfacing from time to time, but they all end up being untrue. Maybe in the next Smash for the Switch? A shoveler can dream, right? At least we have some rad official Shovel Knight themes for our 3DS, PS Vita, and PS4. Which is your favorite? Yacht Club Games is one of the most complete websites that lets fans learn about their development process of an indie game. Lots of articles, instruction manuals, yearly roundups, and if you have any question, you can always reach them on Twitter. All versions of Shovel Knight hold a Metacritic score of around 90, acclaimed by both critics and players. Which one do you think is the best one? Well, there you have it. Once again, I'm Brendan, and thanks for watching 107 Facts about Shovel Knight. Who's your favorite to play as? Which game is the best? Did we miss anything? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. And if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, where we help you game smarter.